I'll always remember the day that we had the first case identified uh, in, in Dudley Borough, uh, not least because it affected one of our home care workers. So, you know, there'd been all this media coverage uh, and this, this building crescendo of concern, and then it was suddenly right there on the doorstep. And, and my experience at the start was that my role was to try and make a very complicated and often unknown process as simple as it could be. So I, I realised early on that if I wanted to free my team and the people working in social care up to do what they needed to do, I had to try and translate all of the chaos, all of the anxiety, all of the fear, all of the unknowns into something that was as simple and straightforward as possible. And, and then, you know, once we'd come up with a plan in terms of what we were doing, just stick to the principles. And the other thing that we did really early doors that made a huge difference was engage with the public and talk to people who use care and support and work out what they were going through as well. Um, and, and that really did change the way that we approached some things. Aiming for perfection is often hugely unhelpful. Um, and there's been something about focusing the energies on trying to understand how to make things better as you go, rather than knowing exactly what to do and expecting to get it right all the time. Um, and once you've accepted that and, you, and you, you, you switch your mindset to any step being in the right direction, being a positive thing to do and a positive use of time and energy, it's really quite liberating. And life in local government uh, can move sometimes at, at a slower pace than you'd like. And all of a sudden you're in the middle of this thing where you're taking decisions in real time and you're making things happen instantaneously. Um, and, and there was something quite liberating about that. Whilst none of us want this pandemic, there's things we've learned about what we can do at pace that have really challenged the way that, that you think about work, the way you think about what you can do. I've learned as well that, you know, it, it's absolutely OK to show imperfection to your colleagues, to show you're going through a difficult time. Um, and to reach out and ask for help as well. None of us are immune to this. Everybody's got an individual story of, of COVID-19 and how it's impacted on them. And at one point, uh, you know, one of my team had a dad on a resuscitation bed. Um, and he wasn't expected to survive. Another one lost a mother. Uh, another one's father was going through a really difficult time of it health-wise. Every single person on the team was dealing with profound impact of COVID on their own families and they still showed up and they still focused on supporting the community and they still got on with it and we 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 tried to process and deal with things as we went as a team and I think that was really helpful and the other thing that might sound utterly trivial is we had scheduled downtime together every week and it started with a quiz just half an hour where you're not talking about COVID and you're just mucking around um, and that allowed a lot of letting go. It allowed the ability to reconnect as people, not just as professionals. Because if you don't have any framework for, well, we've just worked around the clock trying to keep the show on the road, it's just relentless grind and it's psychological fatigue and it's hope, hopelessness. You've got to go back and really pick out the things that have happened. You know, the person who got emergency housing, the person who was in mental health crisis but got the support that they needed. All those individual stories need to be stitched together to build this narrative of this is the difference. So work out what good looks like and then celebrate it.